In the previous module on quantitative research, I stated that quantitative research observes or makes observation through measurement. Now, let us discuss why there is need for measurement. Now, measuring helps us in what is otherwise invisible and it lets us observe things that were once unseen and unknown, but predicted by theory. For example, we may not see or feel magnetism with our natural senses. Magnetism comes from a theory about the physical world. We see its effects indirectly. For instance, metal flecks move near a magnet. The magnet allows us to see or measure the magnetic fields. In contrast to our natural senses, scientific measurement is more sensitive and varies less with the specific observer and yields more exact information. We recognize that a thermometer gives more specific and precise information about temperature than touch can. Likewise, a good bathroom scale gives a more specific and constant and precise information about the weight of a six-year-old child than we can get by lifting her and then calling her heavy or light. Before we can measure, we need to have a very clear idea about what we are interested in measuring. This is a key principle. Measurement connects ideas we carry in our heads with specific things. Specific things we do in the empirical world to make those ideas visible. Natural scientists use many theories and they have created measures to see very tiny things like molecules or insect organs or very large things like geological land masses or particles or planets that are not observable through ordinary senses. All researchers are constantly creating new measures. We might easily see age, sex and face that are measured in social research. For example, physical wrinkles of age, body parts of each sex, skin tones and eye shape. But many aspects of the social world for example, attitudes like trustworthiness, introversion, hope, prejudice, compassion, ideology, divorce rates, deviance, social, social roles, etc. are difficult to observe directly. Just as natural scientists created indirect measures of the invisible molecules and the force of gravity, social scientists created measures for difficult to observe parts of social world. In this context, Abraham K. Plan uh, needs to be, his work needs to be drawn upon. He distinguishes three classes of things that scientists measure. The first class is direct observables. Those things we can observe rather simply and directly, like the color of an apple or the check mark on a questionnaire. The second class, the second class is called indirect observables. The indirect observables require relatively more subtle, complex or indirect observations. We note a person's check mark beside female in a questionnaire and have indirectly observed that person's sex, that the person is a female. History books or minutes of corporate board, corporate board meetings provide indirect observations of past social actions. Finally, the third class of observables consist of constructs, theoretical constructs. These constructs are actually theoretical creations that are based on observations, but that cannot be observed directly or indirectly. A good example is intelligence quotient or IQ. It is constructed mathematically from observations of the answers given to a large number of questions on an IQ test. No one can directly or indirectly observe IQ. Therefore, it is a construct. 
it is consisting of many things which are construed and collected by the researcher using deductive or inductive logic or by collecting empirical data. I once wanted to study compassion. I asked a group of teachers to list an act that they thought was an act of compassion and anyone doing those act or that act could be called a compassionate person. Now the replies I got consisted of, consisted of things like, I saw a person help lost children find their parents. I saw a person put a tiny bird back in its nest. A friend of mine would go with gifts to the old age home during Diwali. A teacher of mine funded my education. I saw a man weep through a movie in which a mother was overcoming adversities to save and protect her child. Now these expressions are expressions of conceptions regarding the phenomenon called compassion. These, con these conceptions are actually mental images. Mind you, these mental images are directly or indirectly observable, are not directly or indirectly observable by the investigator. When we put these conceptions together, it becomes a construct. But notice one thing, construct is being created by me, the investigator. It is based on my empirical findings, but the list is not exhaustive. There may be many more things to the, the thing or the concept called compassion then that, that, that have been captured by my respondents. Here we have to admit that complete and full and total exhaustive all encompassing idea of compassion is practically impossible to capture. And this is clearly because mental images cannot be observed directly or indirectly. Also, even though these conceptions or mental images of compassion in its full form is not observable either directly or indirectly, it is being created. It is a theoretical creation based on observation of conceptions or mental images. When we put together a family of conceptions, it is called a concept. It is to be noted here that the basic character of the concept is essentially a construct. It is created theoretically. We have a list of conceptions. Those together, those brought together are called concept. But that concept is not something which can be called final truth about that phenomenon. It is named and created by the investigator. Some other investigator may collect a different set of mental images or conceptions and arrive at a different set of the family of conceptions to define, explain and measure the concept. Let me just summarize. It will become more clear then. There are three type of things that scientists measure. One, one are those which are directly measurable. Second are those which are indirectly measurable. And thirdly, there are those which are neither directly observable nor indirectly observable. This, this third category is created as a construct on the basis of the conceptions or mental images observed from the subjects. Concept is this family of conceptions. A concept is, as Kaplan notes, a construct, something we create. If we are conducting research on subjects like compassion, trustworthiness, introversion, hope, prejudice, incivility, commitment, leadership, job satisfaction, etc., we must be able to measure them so that they can be expressed in well-organized, meaningful way. As Bulmer succinctly puts it, 
concepts are categories for the organization of ideas and observations. And we all know that concepts are the building blocks of theory and represent the points around which social research is produced. There is always a possibility of redefining them. Owing to this fluidity, it is very, very necessary that we measure them and attempt to measure them accurately, so that there is no confusion regarding what they represent and all analysis is unambiguous and clear. Another aspect that justifies the use of measurement as a method of observation is that measurement allows us to delineate fine differences between people in terms of characteristic in question. This is very useful since although we can often distinguish between people in terms of extreme categories, finer distinctions are much more difficult to recognize. We can detect, we can detect clear variations in levels of job satisfaction. People who love their jobs, people who hate their jobs, but small differences are much more difficult to detect. Secondly, measurement gives us a consistent device or yardstick for making such distinctions. A measurement device provides a consistent instrument for gauging differences. This consistency relates to two things, our ability to be consistent over time and our ability to be consistent with other researchers. In other words, a measure should be something that is influenced neither by the timing of its administration nor by the person who administers it. Obviously, saying that the measure is not influenced by timing is not meant to indicate that measurement readings do not change. They are bound to be influenced by the process of social change. What it means here is or what I am trying to communicate here is that measure should generate consistent results other than those that occur as a result of natural changes. Whether a measure actually possesses this quality has to do with the issue of reliability, which we will examine later. Thirdly, measurement provides the basis for more precise estimates of the degree of relationship between concepts. Thus, if we measure both job satisfaction and the things with which it might be related, such, a, such as stress-related illness, we will be able to produce more precise estimates of how closely they are related than if we had not proceeded in the way so far in the way. So far I have explained the significance of importance of measurement in the context of need for measuring con concepts in quantitative research. The next stage of quantitative research is developing indicators and dimensions of concepts. And this particular as aspect I will discuss in the next module.